Centurion is based on a legend about Rome's Ninth Legion, which disappeared in Scotland, just north of Hadrian's Wall. How did you first come across the legend, and what attracted you to making a film based on it? Um, with so many legends, I think it was, it was a friend of mine told me it in the pub. Uh, <laughs> um, it was when I was living in Newcastle, and uh, uh, obviously I, I born grew up in Newcastle. I lived, actually ended up living for seven years in Carlisle, and you know, spent a lot of time driving up and down the Roman road that runs parallel to Hadrian's Wall. And um, me and some of my mates used to go hiking and stuff in the, in the Cheviot Hills north of the wall, stuff like that quite a lot. And I'm sure I remember one time having a, a pint after one of these walks or whatever, and my friend like mentioned, have you ever heard about the Ninth Legion? It would make a great film story. I was like, well, what's that about? And he's like, very, very simple myth that they marched into Scotland to deal with the Picts vanished without a trace, and that's it. And I was like, okay, that's really interesting. <laughs> so I looked into it more and more, and the more that I read about it, just it just fascinated me what might have actually happened. And so I set about writing the story. Right to the rear. Man Centurion Remus tell him to pull the column back. Make a hole! Keep watching! Yeah. Get ready! Watching! How much historical accuracy is in your story? Um, well, it's kind of a tricky one. Is it, is it, obviously, the more you look into the, the Ninth Legion, the more you find out that it is really just a myth. And you know, it's, it was attacked, um, but then the, the Legion kind of was dispersed and went off and did various other things in history after that. Um, but it is very much a case of like, you know, when the legend becomes fact, print the legend. Um, it's so much more interesting. So. Um, I, you know, had a, a degree of artistic license as to um, what might have happened to them up there because historians will say it's all fiction anyway. Um, but I wanted to make the world in which the story exists as authentic as possible. You know, the, the names are correct, the dates are correct. We wanted to get the armor and the costumes and the uh, weapons and uh, you know the Picts are kind of an amalgamation of ideas because there is no written history or, or, or visual history for the for the Picts. Um, uh, so that's kind of tricky, we know some things about them. Um, but we had to apply a lot of logic to that, of what would they be wearing, it's winter, they have deer and wolves and stuff so that they can wear furs, they have their tattoos, they have their blue woad and the kind of uh, the kind of lime stuff that they put in their hair and just all this kind of crazy stuff that they got up to. So we kind of applied all that to them to, to give them a strong visual sensibility. Um, so, I don't, you know, in terms of like actual historical actu accuracy, um, we put as much in there as we possibly could. Unlike a lot of films in this genre, you don't really have, it's not a fight between good and evil. You know, both sides believe in what they're doing. You know, was this a deliberate choice? Oh, absolutely. I mean, I, I knew I was kind of telling the story from a tricky point of view. We're telling the story from the invaders' point of view. Um, the films that I kind of think that parallels most are like the old John Ford cavalry movies, with our Romans as the cavalry and our Picts as the Apaches. 
and nowadays they would be seen to be really on PC, um, trying to make the cavalry the heroes in any kind of way. So, you know, we have our Romans are, are an invading army. They are like a superpower going into this sort of equivalent of a third world country and being defeated in the guerrilla war. So, you know, the, the analogies are pretty obvious to things that are going on in present day. Um, and, you know, you could take your, your political viewpoint on which side you want to support. <laughs> the, our point of view was that we support these guys because we spend the most time with them, we get to know them, we get to love them and care for them. Um, but only when you step back and you kind of think, hang on a minute, they're really the bad guys. Mm. Um, it's like telling Braveheart from the English point of view and trying to make the English sympathetic in it. Um, so it was an interesting conundrum for me as a filmmaker to, to do that. And I kind of, I'm more interested in those shades of gray than just making it kind of clean cut black and white. Yes, the Picts are capable of brutality, but they're quite justified in what they're doing. And the Romans are equally capable of brutality. So. You know, mm. I think that's that's actually what war is all about. Be right. The pit, the pits are just simply defending their homeland, and that's it. That's yeah, that's all they're probably. doing. There's there's no uh, there's no anger there. There's, they're just being invaded and saying no, we don't want you. There's anger on the part away. of some characters, but it's totally <laughs> justified. Um, especially Etain and Olga's character is is just a big bundle of rage, and she wants to you know take that out on the Romans. But once you hear why, then you kind of think, okay, I I get that. So I think that makes it more interesting. It makes you know, the villains three-dimensional as well as the heroes. Mm. 